then in the JavaScript series I've been working on for this curricula app. And in the description below, you can get a link to the, um, the GitHub on my account where the curricula app is and you can see all the code and there's a readme and everything. Today is the day of Chinese lovers. Okay. Yeah, have fun with your girlfriend. All right, so today I'm going to be uh, working on the update password functionality. So basically, last time, let me just log into an account that I made on here. So let's say Gwen at example.com and the password. Hi, Lars, how are you? So I have this user and I'm going to click on settings. So last time we basically set up the user info in the settings page. And this time I want to work on the reset password or the, I guess, update password functionality. Now um, we'll, we'll need the same update functionality for kind of like a forgot slash reset password flow as well. The only thing um, that, well, I guess the only problem with that is that we don't have an email service set up yet. So we'll need to kind of do this update password and then we've time we might um, start the workflow in the screens for a forgot password and that kind of stuff and then set up an email service. All right, so uh, where do we start here? So let's look at the front end component that handles this. Or I guess first we can make the API to update the password. So you're going to have to provide your current password, of course, and then you provide your new password. And then if the current password matches up and the new password fulfills the requirements, then you can update it. So I'm going to come into the back end first. So let's go to the API. And we have this auth API. So right now we have a login endpoint and we have a register force users to repeat the new password. Okay. Um, all right, we can do that. I, I guess I assume people use password managers and just go ahead and save the password. But I guess if you're living in 2020 and you're still trying to rem remember passwords, then repeating it would be okay. Because um, also a password manager generates the password for you. So then you don't have to worry about accidentally, you know, mistyping a character or something. All right, I can put another field there. Let's see. So I have this register endpoint and then um, let's see, I'll have to do an update password endpoint. So I'll do, let's router.route, router.route, and then I'll give it the, <laughs> the update password. Okay, I think that's okay. And then this will be a post because I'm going to have to send in the passwords. So async, I'll get the request. Uh, let me move my face real quick. So it doesn't end up getting in the way. Okay, so I'll get the request and the response. It's an arrow function. Yeah, you mean for the repeat, for having two new password fields. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll put it on the front end when I get to the front end. Now I'm just working on this, the endpoint for update password. Um, so what do I need to do first? I need to, let's see, get, get the user password or get the old password and the new password. And then check 
check the old password or I'll say verify verify the old password and then uh, hash hash the new password and then update user password and send a response okay so first get user passwords I can pull that off of the request so I'll say const um, let's say I don't know what I'm gonna call it old password and new password equals request dot body and then I've been using view at work oh cool very nice so you got yourself into node how by watching people live stream um, okay so verify the old password um, okay how do we verify the password bcrypt.compare okay so I basically need to find the user and then compare the password so I'm just gonna copy this and maybe I should just make some kind of verification eventually well update password so update password I can pass in the user ID uh, here so I think I should be passing in the user ID actually here because this endpoint doesn't have the user ID unless what I unless what I want to do is uh, make an endpoint in this users API and say users slash user ID and then slash update password would that be more intuitive because actually this auth isn't for uh, you mean for just for general um, passwords or okay so should I so what do you think should I leave this endpoint here because this auth is really for unauthenticated users so I, I'm going to have login, register, that kind of stuff. But update password is really only if you're already logged in. So I feel like I should have this in users since users are using this endpoint. Um, yeah, I think I am going to move it unless someone else thinks it's a bad idea. Oh, I didn't make a logout route yet. I just put it there. All right. Let me move this to the user's API. And here I'm doing ID slash curricula. So I'm going to put it right after here. And so now I have, I'll put ID slash ID should fetch the user ID attached to the request object. That way all authenticated endpoints will automatically have access to the user ID. Um, so th they do have, you mean, so I don't have to pull it off of the params instead of this. I think I'll have to do something similar anyways, right? So if I do, cause I'm pulling ID out of here right now. So I'll do request op params, um, which is what I'm doing everywhere else. Uh, I guess I'll just do dot ID. Uh, let's see. So in the auth middleware right here. Yeah, I'm just checking the token. When you create the JWT, you can set the values you want. So you mean 
I'll put it on the JWT token itself. Let's see, where's my token util? So JWT. So, oh yeah, I am. I'm actually putting the user ID here on the token. So it's already on the token, but I don't see, I guess I don't see the reason um, why I would not just do this. Like what's the, what's the reason why I would just not pull it off the param? Cause I already have it here instead of passing it in some other way. Just get it in the authentication middleware. But the thing is I have to find the, I have to find the user. Oh, are you saying that I can skip this step? Because I'm querying the database using the ID, or I'm going to be. Oh, okay. So the front end never has to send the ID. Um, okay. It doesn't send the ID though. It's in the, I would have to refactor my whole API if I didn't want to do the ID here. So if I didn't want to do users slash user ID, then, you know, that's everywhere. And I feel like that's the restful way of doing it. Depends on what you need. I think I'm going to leave my API like this because I like the users slash user ID and then um, slash whatever resource I want. Um, old password, new password. Oh yeah, this has to be find by ID. By ID. Um. Oh yeah, and then I just pass in the ID here. So I, I'm going to have the user. And then basically, I have the user which already has a password. And then I'm passing in this plain text password, which will be old password. And this bcrypt function takes the plain text password, hashes it, and compares it to the already hashed password to see if it's valid. Now, if it's not valid, I'm going to send back invalid password. Okay. And if it, so I already did this. So if it's valid, then I'm going to do, um, I'm going to have to hash this new password. So I'm going to need bcrypt. Actually, I'm not even importing bcrypt into this file because it's an auth over here. So I guess I'm going to need to um, actually, I'm not using salt rounds because I moved that out of this file. So, oh, I have generate token. So, salt, oh, I am using it. Oh, okay. Um, so actually, I'm going to move this out to a utils function, this bcrypt.hash. So I'm not having to set salt rounds in each individual file. Um, so let me move that to, so in utils, I have this generate token. Um, so let me, I guess let me make, a, what should I make, an auth, auth utils or something? Okay, so I import bcrypt. And then I'm going to make a function that's called, what should it be called? Um, check. Let's see. Um, so the function, so I have this bcrypt.compare, which is fine to use in here. I think, um, but I need to do bcrypt dot 
hash. Yeah, bcrypt.hash, which is what I need. Okay, so I'm going to do um, hash password. And from there, I'll have to do, so I have to pass in the password. And that's all. And then I have my salt rounds, which will be 10. And then I'll export, I'll do module, module dot exports hash password Dino over the last week. And I think it's really exciting um, that, you know, it has so many features, but one of the things, of course, it uses module or it uses ES6 modules out of the box, so it doesn't have this common JS syntax. It's just updated in a lot of ways from Node. So I think next project I might start streaming in Dino. Plus, I figure by then they'll have figured out, you know, any early bugs or anything. Another cool thing is that you don't have this huge node modules. So you just import things directly from a URL and then it caches it in your system when you, I think when you build it. Yeah, so anyway, I think that's exciting, an exciting development in node. Um, okay, so this bcrypt.compare, that's not the one I want. So this. So here I'm going to call um, I'm going to call uh, hash password. Yeah. Hash password. Yes, it should be. Um, oh, that's another thing in Dino is that uh, um, async async and await. So await, you don't have to put it inside of an async function. It's just available anywhere. Um, so let's say return. Okay. So it's just, it's built into Dino. Um, okay. So I have the hash password function and I think, let me see the style I used here. Okay. I used the function keyword, so I'll just leave it like that. So let me go ahead and import it here. Hash password type, send in the password. And then I can get rid of this now. And I'll import const um, hash password equals require. Yeah. Uh, Equals, okay, maybe I have a typo in this file, one second. So let me go, what is it, up a directory and then to utils, and then some, and should have an index file in utils. Um, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so where was I? Over here, so I have utils slash auth. And then I'm getting hash password from there. And I think I might have more auth utils at some point soon. So I might just do pull it out like this and then I'll have to update. So for right now, I'll just do that. Oops. All right. So I'm exporting hash password and now I'm going to import it into here into users. So I'm going to do const hash password equals require and then um, okay I am using a wait there. Let's see here. So require and then I'm going to do utils auth. Okay. And okay, so here I need to hash this new password. 
So I'm going to do uh, const, I guess, hash equals hash password. And then pass in the new password that I want to update to. So pass in the new password and that should give me back a hashed password and then I need to update the user. So since I already have it here, I can just set um, user.password equals hash and then um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and put this on one line. And yeah, I need the await keyword here too. Okay. And then, so I'm updating user.password. And then I need to save it. So I'll do, what is it, user.save? Um, yeah, you, await user.save. So I'll, I'll wait that too. And that, now I'll return. So I'll do the res.send and a 201. Okay, and I shouldn't have to update anything else. Um, but let me see if this works. So it's in users slash the user ID slash update password. So let me just open my REST client and see. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost, uh, my backend's at 5,000, and then I have it at API v1. And then this endpoint is the users. So I wonder if I can send a get request and get all my users back. Unauthorized. Oh, because I need a token to get into there. Okay, so I need to log in first. Um, actually, I can just grab the token that I have right now from my front end. Uh, so I have, let's see, I have it in my store. Oh, I think I have it in local storage too. But okay, so here's the token. Copy that, and now I'll set. I'll just go ahead and set the content type header to, to JSON. Okay. And then the header will be the authorization header. And, oh, it has quotes around it. Let me get rid of the quotes and put bear, bearer. Okay. And save that. And now, let me see if I can make a GET request. Oh yeah, this is this endpoint's just for testing. So I have all of my users returned to me. Sweet. And now I can see the user ID. So let me just grab... Oh, I have two... Oh, this was before I set the email to be unique. So I have two with the same email. So let me grab Gwen too, so it's unique. So, oh, I guess I'm looking at it from user ID anyway. So I have user slash user ID, and then now I have slash update password, and I'm pretty sure old password. I'm pretty sure I used one, two, three, four, five, six for all of my passwords. So, and the new password I'm going to say is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now I'm going to try to send this as a post request. Let me make sure. Uh, yeah, it is a post request. Okay, good. And something's wrong. So let's see what's going wrong. So my, oh, bcrypt is not defined in my users.js. 
Okay, so let me look in users, and yes, I don't have my bcrypt defined, so I'm going to have to import it, and I need bcrypt because I'm using this bcrypt.compare. Okay, so hash password. Um, let's see, so now... Okay, my server restarted, so let's see this again. Okay. So that's good, it works, um, but the response is a 201 created, so I think I'll just send back a 200 um, because I'm not really creating anything here. All right, so that's good, and now let me see if... Let me log out here on the front end. So user log out. And now let me try to, wait, why is it doing that? Oh, I messed something up on the front end. Um, oh, I think I'm checking local storage, but I'm not clearing it or something. Um, if you pass the old password as the new password will be crypt catch that. Um, no, I don't think so. So you, you mean if someone didn't actually change their password, if it's just the same password as it was before? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it will. I mean, I could check that, I guess. So, old password, new password. I could check, I could just check because I, I could hash the old password and new password and then um, compare them here. So I could do the hash password function for both. Um, should I do that? If someone just wants to update to the same password because I know on the front end, I'll be, I guess I'll be checking to see if it's the same password. But then, is it important to do on the back end? I don't know. Yeah, let them. Let them if they want to do the same thing. Okay. Um, so I have this update password now. Yeah. And let me... Oh, I was trying to log in on the front end. So I think that I'm not clearing the token or something. So in view X, oh, I'm not clearing it. How? I thought I clicked log out, didn't I? Update user, auth user. Oh, so it's not. So when I, hmm. Um, and let me look at storage. Am I clearing storage? I'm... Let's see. I don't think I'm clearing... Let me see what I'm doing in Vuex, because I think I messed something up when I was doing updates in the last live stream. So let me go into the front end. Uh, into this... Into that mutation that updates the user object when I log out. Uh, so in store, I think it's in auth. Okay, so I have this user log out function. And then I have local storage dot remove item token and commit update user. So update user is sending this empty object. Oh, okay. Um, I see. So because I... I revised this to work for multiple use cases. So I think, um, uh, I guess I'm just gonna write a clear function. So clear user info, and then I'm gonna do state 
dot user equals an empty object. Um, oh yeah, I need state. So here, instead of, yeah, I'm going to commit clear user info, and then I don't have to pass any anything in. Okay, so that's what was wrong. Let me re refresh that and see now if I can log in. Okay, cool. So now I am logged out. Now I can log in again. And I will do, I think it's Gwen2, Gwen2 at example.com, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think it's seven. Oh, oh yeah, that's exactly what I expected. Okay, so the password changed. For a second there, I thought I had typed in the old password and it was still correct. Okay. Cool, so all of this works. And password update works, that's good. So the next thing I want to do, let me see what time it is. Okay, it's only been 30 minutes. So the next thing I want to do is this user um, should be able to do it from the front end, that's it. So now I need to call that API that I just made. So current password, and a new password. So let me get out of all this, all these files. And in the front end, I'm gonna have to, let's see, what do I have in users? So in the users actions, I have update user. I think I should put this in the auth one because I have login, register, um, but the rest of update user is here, so maybe I'll just put update password here too. Let's see. Um, so payload, yeah, I'll put update user. Uh, yeah, hi Elbriso. So I don't think, so I need toaster notifications. That's another thing I need, so I should go ahead and do that right after I finish hooking this up. I need toaster notifications, which I think I only have one if they don't log in correctly. When you have, when they have time for it, explore biometry login. I implemented it work, it works fantastically. The web standard is called web auth and that's interesting. Um, yeah, I wanna do some different things with login. That's a good idea. I also want people to be able to use their other social logins maybe to make it easier so it can just be kind of a one-click connect login and the less I have to handle login and auth I figure in an application the better so if someone if another service can handle it that's great um, okay so update user password and let's see, yeah, I'll need commit, state, payload, all that stuff. And then, um, oh yeah, so I have this function and then I'll need to do this again. And okay, so right now I have this in the back end, I have this as a post request. Here I'm doing a patch request, but I guess it is a post because I have a special endpoint for it. So I have the update password endpoint, which isn't, you know, just sending a patch to um, users slash user ID. So I think post is fine for the update password right now. Okay. So I'm getting the user ID here, and then I'm gonna put slash update password. Oops. Sports modern browsers and operating systems, not just iOS. Oh, not iOS yet. Uh, 
That's very cool. It would be kind of a niche for, I mean, outside of a company for just lay people or regular people. I guess the average person might not have that. Um, yeah, maybe one of these days we'll do it in a live stream. Um, or maybe you can make a video about it and we'll watch it. Let's see. Um, payload. So pay payload will be the old password and the new password. And then I'm passing in the user slash user ID update password. Okay, so that should work. And then I need a mutation. Actually, I don't need a mutation because the front end doesn't need to know about the password. They already have a valid token. So that's all I need, really. And then um, I will need to, um, I guess, give a toaster notifica notification for success or failure if the update was successful. Okay, so um, I won't actually need commit here. So I don't need to change anything. All right. This should work, so update user password. Now let me import it into the component that I'm using, which is the settings page. So let me find the settings page, settings.view. Here's the password card. And current password, new password. Here it is. So. Um, user, update user, so let me import that view x method I just made. So update user password, and now I can call it on this, the update user password, and then um, I need to pass in a payload. So let me make the payload, so const payload equals uh, this dot current password. Oh wait, I'll have to put old password. Old password is this dot current password and then new password is this dot new password. Okay, and then I need to pass in the payload. And here, I need to disable this button if you don't have things typed in both of these fields. So let's see, I should already have some kind of validation. I'm going to change this to update. Okay, so I should have some kind of validation here already. Oh no, I haven't put it in this component yet. So I'll just set disabled, so uh, disabled, so let's say it's um, well, I'll, I'll put current password here, so current password and new password. Um, so it's disabled if there isn't one of these. So this should be an or actually. So, um, okay. My, this one key, the pipe key on my keyboard is getting stuck now for some reason. I need to clean my keyboard. Okay. Sweet. So current password. So you need something typed in here. Okay, cool. That's good, so that's disabled. And I should also, I guess I should also check in here. Um, actually, so what, sh what I should do next is do form validation. So I want passwords to be a certain length. I really don't care if they use symbols or whatever in their password, but the, I'm going to check that the new password or that all passwords are at least eight characters. And let me look at the login form 
or the sign up form. Now I called it register. Uh, let me look and see if I have any password validation here and it doesn't look like I do. That's right because all of my passwords so far are one, two, three, four, five, six of all of my users. So I'm going to have to create a new user um, to implement that. Um, so why don't I just do um, let's see let me just add that as a dev task because I need to clean up the database first so I'm gonna add uh, create password link requirement let's say should it be at least at least eight characters and that's for I'll, I'll just go ahead and check in login but sign up login sign up and update password okay so that's just in the backlog for later now let me look at this users can update passwords from their setting page we actually didn't test that yet so let me go ahead and test that, that they can actually update it. So who am I logged in as? Oh yeah, I'm logged in as the Gwen2 user. So my current password should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My new password, I'm gonna make it one, two, three, four, five, six again. So let me see if I update if I update the password, did it do anything? Um, okay, I forgot to have my network request on, but let's see in view, view X. Oh yeah, I'm not sending a mutation for this, so I guess it might have failed or it might have worked. Um, Let's see, updated, set password. Okay, so it did set a new password just now. All right, so now my new password, and I'm gonna watch the request, the network request this time. So I'm gonna change it from one, two, three, four, five, six to, let's do six, five, four, three, two, one. And I'll do update. Okay, and it worked. Sweet, so now after I update the password, I just wanna do some cleanup here. So on my settings page, let's see, this.update password, and then I'm gonna clear the fields. So clear um, these two. So this.current password equals an empty string and this dot new password equals an empty string. Okay, so once I save the password, those will clear. And now I need to um, give some user feedback. So once their password is updated, they don't know, the user right now doesn't know if it worked or it didn't work or what happened. Um, so let me see, get rid of register. Um, oh, my cat's meowing. Okay. Uh, where should I do this? Okay, so I have update snack bar. This is from my view X. So let me copy this because, uh, like Obriso mentioned, I need to put this in the user auth. So I need this. to be, um, yeah, I'm gonna do it from my view X, so not in the settings page. So here's the update user password, and then um, let's say update password successful, and then I'll give them a snack bar, show them a snack bar. Um, okay, so 
that's good. But if it's unsuccessful, I need to also show an error. So how do I get, so on res here, I should be able to see, so what, what do I actually see on res? Let me log out res. I should get something like res.status and then I can check the status. So if I get a 401, I can, you know, give an error in the snack bar. Um, so let me reset the password again. So my last password is 654321. I'm going to open up this. And then my new password will be 123456. Okay, so I'll update. And these worked okay. I didn't get a toaster though. I was weird. Um, oh, commit is not defined. That's why. Because I thought I wasn't going to need commit, but I do. So, okay. So now I have commit. And now let me try it again. Reset the password again. So I, now it's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to change it back to six, five, four, three, two, one. Update. Okay. Um, so update password worked. Great. And oh, I got the toaster notification. If you saw that, I forgot, um, which is good. So now, so I do get, yeah, I thought so. So I, I get res.status. So if the status isn't 200, basically, then I want to give an error message and say it didn't work because I'm expecting a 200. Um, so show, so it'll be the sna same snack bar, but here I'm going to have, I'm going to do a tur ternary and say, actually, I don't want to nest a ternary inside that. That looks, looks bad. So I'm going to do const message equals um, res.status. So if res.status is 200, I get a success message. Else, I get, oh, this has to be a question mark. It's a question mark. All right. Um, else, I get, what should I get? Um, update password failed, I guess. Okay. And now here I'm going to just put message. Oops. There. All right. So now let me do, let me just type in something random here. Oh, router is not defined. Um, where am I using router here? Let's see. So, so where is a router? I'm not using it in this file. So let me see. Oh, here? It can't be here. I'm trying to... So this isn't showing me exactly where it is in my app. Oh, it says router.replace with login. Um, I think I only have that in... So in index.js, router is not defined. How is that possible? I'm importing router into auth. And this was code that was already written, so I'm not sure why. Unless it's talking about my... Yeah, it's talking about my Axios config, actually. 
So it's saying that I don't have router defined here, which is true. I don't have router defined, do I? Oh, I thought I did there. Okay, never mind. Um, so I need to import router into my Axios config. So that was an error that was probably there the whole time. Um, so let me import router. How am I importing it here? Oh, I'm just doing this number. So let me do import router from, uh, this is in the root level of my store. So I should be able to do router, right? Where's my router at? Um, do I just, okay, so it's just one router file. Okay, I don't have a folder or anything, that's fine. All right, so that should get rid of the router error now. All right. Update. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's what it's doing. So whenever I have a request that fills with 401, um, it's saying that because that's an unauthorized request, it's going to route me to login. But in this case, I'm already logged in. I'm not failing the login. I just failed the password update. So I should probably not return a 401 there. Um, so I guess I can return just a 400. And let's see, so in the, in my API, let me, oops, let me go back into my API. And in my new users endpoint, so here I'm going to return uh, just a 400 instead of a 401. And then in my Axios router.replace. Um, so where am I? response.use. Oh, so if there's any error returned. Wow. So if there's any error at all returned. Um, so that's not actually good. Because I think this will still fail now because of that. Let me update here. Yeah, and it still routes to, so I have to fix that. So I just want, I just want a 401 actually to route to login instead of any error at all. Um, so response, so I guess I can check the response.status here. So what I should do is do if response.status um, equals 401. Now is that, yeah, it should be a number, I think. So, and then I can router.replace login. Check the error object. So is the error object, does that have all of the fields on it. Oh, right, because error is going to get the status here. Never mind. Let me undo that. So it's going to go to the error object. I won't even get it in this success object in the first place. Um, so what, it, what fields does the error object? Yeah, thanks. They do. Um, so what fields does the error object have? Let me just log it. So Okay.
Um, request failed with status code 400. So it's not, it's just giving me this as a string. Or no, 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 it's a, it's a stack trace. And let's see, error. So how do I check this, the exact status code in the error object here? Um, I guess I could look it up. Oh, can I get the HTTP status? Let me try that. Uh, let's see, const HTTP status equals error. Um, okay. Let's see if that works. Go back to the settings page. Yeah, that's undefined. It must be... Okay, so they don't return it in the error object, but they have, I mean, they have it in the error message. So it's weird that they wouldn't have like error.message and error.status. Oh, error.response.status. Let me see. Um, so error. Dot response dot status okay let me go to settings oh sweet yeah that works so now I can check this thank you um, so now I can check this. So if equals 401. So if it's unauthorized, then I want to route. Because if it's a 500 error or any other 400 error, I don't think I want to reroute to login. Um, so I'll copy that. And then get rid of this row. All right, so this should work now. And let me go to settings and make sure it doesn't reroute me. Okay, so good. Request failed with status code 400, that's good. And now I'm going to, cause that's um, interrupting the response. So I guess, what should I do here? Um, so I guess what I should do, should I set the toaster notification from Axios then? Or should I... does not contain a response attribute. Um, okay, I guess I'll have to test the app later and make sure that that always happens. Or in the new JavaScript, I guess I could put question marks after error response status. Um, but for right now, so I have the snack bar here um, let's see actually. So in my view X, it's not calling. Yeah, so with this Axios post request, it's not because it's an error, it's not calling. So would a try catch catch the error here? Because it's already been being handled in Axios. Um let me get rid of that. 
so promise dot reject so I think if I do where you can set parameters and that way you can tell Axios to display error notifications um, yeah that's what I should do that will make it much simpler all right so now my Axios, wrap your Axios request or you can set parameters. So I do need to send, update your store with pending stuff so you can display spinners without explicitly doing that for each request. That is, that is also a good idea. Okay. So let me think. Another video. Yeah, another video for the spinners. Um, but I really, I don't think I put that in my app at all. So let me add that. Add spinners for network requests. Okay, that, that won't take too long to implement. All right, so let me see. So I did do this. I don't have the forgot password functionality, which isn't as important as the update because they can always very annoyingly email an admin, I guess. Um, all right, so now let's see if they reject, if there's an error, so Let's see if there's an error. The thing is though, like when I do the snack bar from here, I'm passing it a specific message or a specific, yeah, a specific message for what it is, why it failed and stuff. If I do it from Axios, I'm not sure I can pass in a message because it just intercepts it with the request, right? So maybe I should have some a different kind of function where, where I can call it from here and then it calls. Yeah, I guess I guess I could set that in Axios. Yeah, so you're right. Um so let me think, how should I handle how should I handle these error messages in my application? Um, so I already have the toaster set up for the errors, so I just need some kind of handle error function. Um, so I have the router.replace and then I need some kind of handle error message. Um, or I could just say, yeah, and then that would return an error message to the user. Now I already have, let's see, on my default Vuex, not state actions. I'm basically just calling, just calling where am i calling it put item delete post there's so many i thought i was calling oh i think it's only a mutation where i update the snack bar yeah it is so then i just update the snack bar pass in the settings and it calls um so What if I just had a like a handle error function and then I pass in the message that I want to display from these async requests. But then I would have to wrap every single one in a try catch statement. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I should think about this a little bit more. Uh and figure out how I can do that in um, in Axios. 
Okay, so now I have this done. What I do want to do in this video is me log out. So I want to at least get the screen set up. Um, so I want to get some kind of password, forget password or forgot password screen set up here. So email password and then let me make, let me close this. So um, let's see. Okay, close that. So where do I want this? So I need in my views, I have register, login, auth template. Now I'm going to need a couple new screens here. So the first one I'll put forgot password dot view and that one is only going to take in a user's email and then we're going to email them uh, some type of forgot password code or something, a code that we generate. And then we are going to because I think that's the easiest way rather than sending them a link. Um, okay, so we have forgot password and now we'll have reset password screen. So once they type in their email and forgot password, it'll take them to the reset password screen where they can type in the code and their new password. Okay, so I'm going to use the auth template for these as well um, and the slots in here so it looks kind of just like the login and the other screens. So let me just copy paste the login component and put it in here and in here. And now let me, well first let me um, create these routes in router. So I have register, login, and let me do uh, reset password, or actually I want um, uh, forgot password first. So forgot uh, password, okay, forgot password and reset password. Okay, cool. So I have those and I'll put them after here. So let me do path, path is forgot. Yeah, I'll just put forgot password, I guess. Um, name will be forgot password and then uh, this will be the other component is also called forgot password. All right and the same for um, what was it reset password? Oh wait this is reset password. All right and Reset password and then reset password. Okay, I think that's all spelled right. That looks good. All right, and now I need to update these components. So this one is reset password. Uh, this one is also forgot, man, I think I need some coffee. I just got a coffee maker and some Dunkin' Donuts coffee, so I've been drinking coffee again. Okay, I have to name this, um or give it the title forgot password. 
And then this will just have the email field. So I can get rid of everything else. I'll keep this don't have an account register, I guess. That's fine. And then I don't need a password here. So, and then I won't need login, but I'm sure I'll figure out, uh, I don't know what this is going to be, like what I'm going to have to call here. So, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that's good. And now the reset password, let me just update this template real quick. So, um, reset password and then so here oh I forgot to add the two new password fields in the settings page oh well here I think I will have that confirm password so let's put confirm password label will be confirm password this will be new password, okay. And then this will be the code from the email that we've sent them. So that'll be code. And then this will be code and password. What did I call that again? Oh yeah, confirm password. Confirm password. All right, and oops, I think that's good enough for now. So let's see. Oh, I don't have a link to the forgot password page. So let me make that link from the login page. So here I have this don't, don't have an account register here one and padding all of two. So let me copy that and I'm going to say just um, forgot password. Uh, I don't know. Should I put update password here? Update password here and then this will link to the forgot password page. All right. So this should work. Wow. So that's a lot of space in between. Um, let me get rid of this padding class. Nope, 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 nope. That's not good. All right. So I think the margin there's some margin at the bottom here because it's a paragraph tag. Um, yeah, so there's 16 margin at the bottom. So I'm going to get rid of that margin. Um, all right. So in View to 5, which is the component framework I'm using, I can do margin, bottom, and then set it to a negative margin. So, or I can just set it to zero. Let me see what zero does. Yeah, so that moves them closer together. Let me see what negative one does. So negative one. Okay, that's even closer. I think that's okay. I think negative one's pretty good. Yep, smushes it together four extra pixels for me. Okay, so now I have update password here. Sweet. And now I have forgot password. And when I submit forgot password, I need to call an API to basically, and the API will handle send, sending them an email with the code in it. And then on the front end, I will route them to the reset password page, basically. Okay, so I have that done. Let me just go to the reset password page to see how it looks. Okay, cool. 
So I have all those. And then once I reset their password, I'll send them back to the login page. So I'll have to type it in again. And I think, I think that'll work pretty well. Um, okay. So let's see if I log in Gwen at example.com password one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me go to the settings page and let me go ahead and create the confirm new password field on the settings page. Get rid of all those, go to settings and real quick, let me just make that field. So I have the new password here. So I'm going to duplicate that V model confirm password and I'll say confirm new password. Um, let me do confirm password and then um, so in the validation because I'm going to use Validate here eventually I need Validate in all my forms um, let me add that as a dev task so update all forms to use Validate okay I'm going to have to go through all of these tasks and write some stuff out for them. Um, so here I'm going to check and say, manually check right now and say that if this dot uh, new password equals no equals this dot confirm password uh, then you can run this stuff. Otherwise Oh yeah. Um, okay, else, I don't know, give them some kind of toaster notification. So I could, or no, I guess the form, the form itself should really be telling them. So Right now, it's not going to do anything, though. It's just going to fail, and they won't know why. So I do need Validate here to let them know and for password validation. So I wonder if I should just go ahead and do Validate this stream. Um, let me see what other dev tasks I have, really. So update password functionality. So this second one, uh, users can change. This is really... Um, blocked because I need the email here. So let me see, do I have a blocked label? Because I need email functionality because they can't update their password or reset their password unless I've sent them an email already. So I don't actually have blocked here. So let me go to the issue. So I navigate to the issue and I don't, can I add tags from here? Invalid help wanted. Oh, it doesn't have a blocked already. Let me edit. Bug backend enhancement. Well, if bug is red, then what should I put for blocked? What color? Um, blocked is also red. Or is that orange? I can't tell. Oh, when I hover, it's like orange. Pink. Blocked is pink. I think that's good. And this one's purple. I'm not sure colorblind people will be able to tell the difference, but you can still read the word. So, <clears throat> okay, so blocked. And now I will go back to my issue and say that this is blocked. So, blocked. Okay, I added the label blocked. And now I'll go back to projects, dev tasks, and I'll move this to ready out of in progress because it's blocked. I still need to do this, delete functionality. 
Um, so of all these things, create password requirements. So actually, Viewlidate and password requirements, these two really go together. So why don't I go ahead and start working on Viewlidate for forms, because that's been like on the back of my mind for a while. All right, so where do I use Viewlidate right now? Um, oh, the ma so the major place I'm using that validation library right now is on this form because I'm validating the top level fields here. I'm also validating that they have a section name and I'm also validating that if they have something typed into here, it must be a valid URL. So I have a lot of validation going on in this form. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and implement Viewlidate on this page. Why not? Uh, so, and I have to make sure that it matches up with what I have going on in my back end too. So let me look at that page. Um, so the form on that create curricula page is from the components, this create form. So in the main form, I have, have a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, I have this validations object on my root um, um, options object, my view options object. So I have this validations, it shows me all the things I'm va validating. Um, and basically, so I can validate nested arrays and stuff too. So mine will be a lot easier on the settings page though, because I don't have these nested looped things. It's just like five fields on the whole page. So let me go ahead and copy just this because I don't want any of the fancier stuff. So let me go back to settings and I'm gonna need to add this validation. So I'm gonna add it after data, put validations and then there. And here, I'm, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to import things like this math, max length function from Viewlidate in a second. Um, I used to use vValidate a lot for validations in view, but it seems like it got way more complicated with the last update. So, uh, so I, I just feel like Viewlidate's a bit easier to use now. Um, okay, so uh, there was some other problem I was having with vValidate. I don't remember what it was because it was like in one of the first live streams I did on this. Uh, nobody's remembers. Oh, he's not in the chat right now, but he was helping me through it. We were kind of figuring it out together. Okay, so valid user. Oh, wait, I don't need valid user form. I need to validate. So username, email, and current password. And then I need to validate. Um, oh, I see. This is a nested object here. So. Okay, so I'm going to do. I need to validate username. Separately, I need to validate email and then current password and then new password and then con confirm password. I need to validate these five fields. So um, for passwords, it will be easy because I just want the length. Oh yeah, and then I'm going to also validate that these two match. Um, and they're inside two different forms here. So am I using V form? Yeah, I'm using V form. The ref is password form and user info form. So I'm wondering, uh, probably have to look it up how Viewlidate handles multiple forms. Um, oh yeah, I guess I use Viewlidate's methods like, what is it, touch or dot validate or something. So I'll, I'll be handling that in the submit functions, I think. Okay, so what do I want for username? 
Uh, let me look in the back end and see if I'm actually setting any stipulations for username. And I am not, so it can actually be a string of any length, apparently, as long as it's unique. Okay, uh, so that's not great. Um, what what stipulations should I have for username? I guess it has it should be like between three and twenty characters, maybe. Because I I don't see anyone needing anything outside of that. And three characters kind of covers the shortest names people can have. Okay, so I want between three and twenty characters. Let me see. Um, so. Mongoose schema uh, string length requirement. Let's see if this comes up with anything. Set max length for max length for a string. Match. Um. Okay, so I could make write a validator for it. Mongoose validator. Oh, that's a separate. This is a separate package. Verify that they are hydrated. Hydrate strings. Oh, and to, okay. You're making a joke. Okay. Um. Maybe adding min length and max length to schema for mongoose. Oh, so I guess this was a feature issue someone asked about. Oh, that was years ago. This belongs as a plugin. Um, all right, so I guess we might want a validation plugin. I was sure that Mongo or mongoose would have that built in for you. Um, so let's, let's take a look at the plugin that was mentioned here, the mongoose validator. Let's see if this is still a thing. That question's from 2015. Let's see. Last time updated was July 25th, 2018, almost two years ago. Mongoose. Let's see if there's another one. Mongoose field validator. Um, oh, here's on the Mongo docs. So, okay, schema validation. Here's Mongoose validation. Validation is defined in the schema type, so that's schema type validation. Um, built-in validators. Okay, so required is a built-in validator. Um, numbers have min max validators. Strings have sweet. This is exactly what I want. So that question must have been old. Um, okay, so this is just what I want. I have min length and I have max length. Let me go back. Where is it? So I guess I can either pass in um, a string for an error, so if they don't meet the minimum requirements, or I could just handle that in my API when Mongo throws an error. I'll probably pass in... No, I won't. No, I won't. Because I'll be checking anyways. But I want to make sure this doesn't make it into the database. So the minimum requirement, or no, the min length and max length. Let me set those. So on username, I'm going to do min length is... What should the min length be? Three. I already said three, so, and max length is 20. Does anyone need 20 characters in a username? I don't know. Uh, that's fine, though. 
email. I'm not validating the email. So can I use regex here? Oh, match. So I can use regex. Um, bad breakfast dot bacon. What the heck? Okay. So let me look at the regex string validators match regex creates a validator that checks if the value matches the given regular expression. Okay. So I need some kind of regex object. The very best usernames. Okay, that's fine. 20 characters is fine. So I wonder, I mean, do I have, I wonder if I should use a JavaScript library to do email validation instead of having a long regex. Regex email validation. And also on the front end, I'm using view, what is it? Vulidate's built-in email regex validator. So I should probably, if anything, copy the regex from them. So I get the same email validation on the front end and the back end. C sharp. Um, let me look at Vulidate on their GitHub. and look at their source code. So here, so if we go into source, uh, validators, email. Oh, wow. So yeah, here's the regex that my front end library uses. So I am just going to copy this and use the same thing. So this was a match, right? So I can do match and then set it equal to the regex. Okay, that's good. And then password also will be um, min length. Should I set a max length on password? Like 128 characters or something? Because I know the hash length will be the same no matter what, no matter how long the password is. But, you know, I don't want them sending the Library of Congress across the network to the back end, which they couldn't do anyways. But, um, min length. So anyways, min length for password. Should I set it at 8 or 10? I know some people like short passwords. Let me just do 8. And I'm going to do max length for password. So max length will be 120 characters, 150, 200 characters. I don't know. This is fine. And then I'll just have to match this on the front length. Four character. Okay. That's exactly what I want in my application. Four character passwords. Um, okay, so I set up validation on the back end. And let me just make sure I can still sign up as a user and I didn't screw something up. Um, let me log out here and let me sign up and I'll say username will be Marshall. Might have already used that username. Let's say Marshall at example.com. That's my little brother's name. And then I'm going to say my password. Let me give it a password that's too short. Sign up successful. How did it do that? Did it? Was it really successful? Well, let me try it. So, Marshall at, yeah, hooray, it failed. Or it succeeded, it's supposed to fail. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three, four, five, six. And now it routes me to login. Oh man, okay. Uh, let me go to my REST client. Go to, um, let's see. Well, since I'm not invalidating tokens, I can just reuse the same token over and over again. Okay, so I got all the users back. And, oh, so I have uppercase Marshall and now I have lowercase Marshall. So actually, I should check that the username is case insensitive in that someone can't make a lowercase or uppercase version of an already existing username. Oh, and the email too, marshall at example.com. Isn't that the same thing I have here? Yeah, it is. Why isn't the email unique? It's supposed to be unique, but it's not working. What the heck? Um, shouldn't this fail? It's supposed to fail. Um, okay, so what, what, what should I do first? Um, so why isn't this unique email? Why isn't it? I mean, I can try resetting my server. Okay, and now I'm going to try to sign up again, log in, and let's say this one is alex at example.com, I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, that should fail. Good, 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 good. That seems to have failed. Um, of course, I wasn't capturing the network. Let me do that this time. Um, oh, so it just uh, hangs up. Okay, because I'm not handling it on the back end, I think. Password of oh, it's not actually because I'm not handling it on the back end. It's because um, apparently I am not passing anything in. Delay test. Um, so apparently I'm not. It's not passing anything in. Oh, this isn't actually a valid user. So oh, there's so much. Oh, 11.5 second delay. That stinks. Sorry. Okay, so let me sign, let me register again. So I'm going to say my name is Alex. I am Alex. Oops. At example.com. Password is 456. Submit. Why does register still work? Okay, Mongo validation is not working at all. It's not validating. I could probably pass in any email here and it wouldn't validate because it's not validating. I mean, the required works because I checked that before. Unique doesn't seem to be working and neither do these. Well, no, I haven't tried the link through. Oh yeah, min password doesn't work because it still lets me set the same password. Oh! I am such an idiot. Okay, so validation is working. This min and max length on password is totally irrelevant here because I am hashing the password, so it's always going to be the same length. Okay. So that was dumb. Hi, Kim. How are you? Just figuring out some validation stuff right now. Uh, there's so much validation that needs to happen in this app from the front end and the back end in every way. Okay, so password. Um, so password needs to be checked in the API, not in the database. B 
because I need to check the plain text password. So I'm going to need to do that in register here. By the time they hit login, they've already set their password, so I don't need to check there. But in register, check this info is valid. Yes. Um, password hash. So before I hash a password, I need to check. So if password dot length, wait, length, yeah, is greater than or equal to eight, then do this. Um, I also need to check that they actually pass in all of these things. So um, which I should reject right away. So, so if they don't pass these checks and get down to here, then I'm going to do res dot send. Um, what should I send? I guess a 400. Oops. Okay. So if the password length is greater than or equal to eight characters, it works. Otherwise it doesn't. Um, So here I should also put the, well, they'll get a username. They'll get errors from the database if these things don't line up to what the database requires. So I think I need to get rid of this now. Um, I think I need to wrap this in a try, try catch. So if, um, Try catch, and then, oh wait, I need this first, so, and then res.send. So should I do a try catch finally? Because res.send will finish everything first, right? Um, well, let me just catch the error. So res.send 400 and console.log the error. So I'll do, actually I should console.error the error. And that's another thing I want to do is logging, make some logging middleware for the back end. All right. So I think that's fine for right now because this try catch should catch any database errors that are thrown when I try to um, save bad data. And this will catch if the, anything else. Yeah. Okay. I guess if the password isn't of the right length. Um, but then I should put, I guess I should put this here, right? For right now? Yeah, I think that's good. Um, so now I'm validating when a user registers, which is good. And then the other place I need to validate that password is, um, so it's going to be actually on update password and on reset password too. So eventually I want to put that somewhere else, I guess. So let's see. Now I'm in, this is, let's see, update password. I'm taking in the old password and the new password from the person. I am, okay, I'm finding the user. So before all of this, actually, I want to validate that if new password dot length is greater than eight. No, greater than or equal to eight. Then, 
Um, otherwise, I'll just go ahead and send the invalid status. Um, so I'm comparing the old password. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and send res.send 400, which now I'm doing this in two places. So if the old password doesn't match their current password, I'm sending an invalid password. And then here, I guess I would send, okay. Um, I would send password. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just send a regular error. And then, okay. Um, I'll leave it. I'll leave it like this for right now. That at least catches the errors with passwords. And now, with, because this component is broken right now, and I'm, I've left it in a broken state. So now that I went ahead and did a bunch of stuff on the back end, I'm going to, um, on the front end, I need to validate, do the form validation. And this form validation is on the user settings page. So I need to validate that these are correct. So let's see, Alex, um, let me import the the validation helpers from, let's see, from Vuladate, this Vuladate library I'm using. Um, so let me copy that and uh, validator. So I have required max length URL. I'm also going to import min length min length and I don't need URL here so I'm going to get rid of that I I will need email so use the email um, so here I'm going to let's see <laughs> hi Sclare, Sclare. Um, it's a quarantine cut what can I say uh, I was trying to, so I was trying to, I had scissors and I was trying to cut my hair because I usually get it thinned and sometimes relaxed so it's not frizzy and all over the place. Yeah, I used to use vValidate all the time and then I picked up Vulidate and I'm really liking it so far. Maybe I'll use it again. Yeah, I couldn't get it even. Hairdressers have some special kind of talent. It's, it's very difficult to cut hair. I guess especially if I'm looking in the mirror trying to do it. So then I figured, you know, the only way I'm going to get this even if I, if I just start it all over. So I shaved it off. And then I was trying to shave it at like an inch. But I didn't realize what I actually bought was a beard trimmer, not a hair cutter. So when I started shaving, it just it took all of the hair off. So then I was like, okay, whatever. But I kind of like it. Like this is the first time I've, you know, not had to worry about my hair or wash it. I guess I wash it, but not like I used to. Um, okay, so this is data. Let me see what the validations are. So I just pass in, oh, so I don't even, I thought I had to write a function and pass in the value, but it handles that for me. So I'm just calling their functions. Um, so, what if I want multiple validations? Oh, okay, so it just does this here. So I make it an object. So username would be an object with all the validations that I need, which is not required because they could do username or email. Um, so for right now, I'm going to do min length, and that will call the min length function and I'll pass in yeah thanks um, it's definitely important to validate on the back end and then on the front end because you have to let the user know for user feedback 
like what they should be doing. Min length is three. And then um, max length, max length is 20. Okay, so that's the first object. Now we need email. So um, what do I validate there? Is it type? Uh, let me look up. Oh no, everything's broken. So, well, I can get rid of this and that. So let me do look at validate email validation. Are you going to use Vutify with Vue? This app is in Vutify. This whole application, you can see all of my Vutify. So V row, V column, V form, V card. Um, so right now I'm using a MacBook Pro. Um, this is a 20, late 2015 model and I haven't upgraded because I did not want that butterfly keyboard. But now that they don't have the butterfly keyboards anymore, I'm going to buy a new MacBook Pro this summer because for video editing, this one um, is getting a little old. It takes forever to process videos and stuff like that. Let's look at view of the date. So, uh, I guess getting started in examples. Let me search for email. Okay, it accepts valid email addresses, so no arguments. Okay, so I guess I just call email here, right? Is that what I do? Um, well, maybe. So current password, all of these will be the same. So I'll have min, min length and max length and I need to set 128 characters for the max and 8 for the min. Okay, and then this object will be the same. I'll do it there and here. Okay, so why is this? expected a comma. Oh, right, because I don't have that. Okay. So those passwords are all the same there. And then, okay, so I have validations here. Let me see. Let me just look and see if that works at all out of the box. So, oh, let me refresh. Okay. Or if I do something too long, no. Reset form. Um, what about this? And I actually these, on, so on these forms, I need to set it as required. Okay, that matches up. So I'm importing required and required and required. All right. Um, all right, so that's not validating. I think what I need to do, validation process. Yeah, so generally speaking, everything needs to be validated on the server because yeah, people can, people do all kinds of things intentionally and unintentionally on the client side. You can never trust users, basically. That's the moral. Um, all right, so val I do have my validations object. Now I think I need to set it up some somehow. So computed. Um, oh, so this is checking name errors, section errors. This is what's returning the error here and causing the form to validate. And then also, 
Okay, on submit, I'm also checking to see if the form, if there are errors in the form. Yeah. <laughs> um, name errors. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, that's right. I'm not hooking that up anywhere. It's not being called. So why am I expecting validation to just appear out of nowhere? So this name errors, I'm calling that from, um, so this, these error messages are built into beautify, I think, into the beautify text fields. Um, and then at input, okay, so at input, this is where I'm checking the validation continuously at input. So I'm going to need to add these things this error messages and then input and blur as well. So I'm going to copy these. Yes. Oh man, it's been almost two hours. All right. Uh, there's just so many things I want to get done. It's hard to stop. Error message when not null shows the error. Let's see. Uh, my cat really wants to give me this mouse toy. What did I just copy? Um, oh yeah, I copied the, um, <laughs> this. I think I need some more coffee. Yeah, basically the same type of validation. That's why I copied the exact email validation from Beulidate, which I'm using on my front end, so it would have the same validation on the back end. Uh, so there weren't any like nuances. Yeah, I don't know why I pasted template code in my computer there. That was weird. Um, this goes in my field, my text fields. So let me start with password validation. And I already have required here. Oops, 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 oops. Um, okay, let me redo that and yeah, um, not sure what exactly I did here. So I have error messages and these, I'll do this and for error messages, this will return an array. So that's why I made these met where are they where are they that's why i made these methods here to return an array on errors and i think i put these in errors down here in methods because i had to call them with arguments um okay so name errors i'll have to make uh i guess password errors let me see password errors yeah because i can reuse those for all of these um, okay, and then validate. So this dollar sign V, yes, yes, good explanation. So this dollar sign V is an object that I get from Vulidate. So um, I'll do, so for this it's current password, so do current password and then I'll need to call password error so I need to make this function and I'll put it in computed I think that's where it belongs so computed password errors and I need to return the errors from there so what am I doing in computed here const errors I'll copy that and update it here why not so making an errors array, and then if this dot, this dollar sign V object dot name. Okay, so this is returning the, the errors that I want. And I think that was because it wasn't giving me the right errors, maybe. Let me look at my main form. So I have the initial name. Um, okay, 
But then in my, let's see, in my form sections, I also have a name in there, but I think I have different validation for that. Because let me look at, yeah, here's another section name. So that's a different validation. So I won't worry about that. Um, so I'm going to have to have different, a different errors. Yeah, because in here I'm checking, this is hard coded. So the field that I'm checking is hard coded in here. So I'm going to have to have, um, like a current password, um, new password and confirm password here. So current password errors and then okay so if it's not touched then return empty errors meaning don't show any errors and if dot max length errors dot push name must be at least 20 at most 20 characters um, okay, so let me change these. So to current password, so I'm going to check the current password here and then here I'm going to check the current password max length, which should be no more than 128 characters. Oh, password. Um, and then, hi Suzanne, how are you? Um, okay, so that's checking that, and now current password here, I'm going to put it, um, okay, it's required, so, and then I'm going to put, oh, no, 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 uh, password, and the, the vim undo, just undoes everything. I need to do command Z. Um, so let's see, current password. Okay. All right, so this looks pretty good. We have current password errors. And I'm gonna replace that. So let's see if that works. Sweet. Oh no, it's returning completely the wrong error. Password must be at most 120 characters long. Um, that's not the first thing I want to show people. The first thing I want to show people is this. So, there. Password is required. Okay. And now, and now it shows password must be at most. Oh, I'm checking the wrong thing. Current password dot max length. Oh, I'm checking continuously. I'm checking min length. I'm calling min length max length. That's my problem. <laughs> okay, there. That was my problem. All right, that should work now. Um, and yeah, nobody's is on every stream. Do you watch other streamers, nobody's, or is it just this channel? Max length. So let me do min length. Password must be at least eight characters long. All right. Let me just try this. I'm going to. I think this is the last thing I'm going to do. So password is required, but now if I type in one character, it says password must be at least eight characters long, and now it works. But if I do, let's see, let's see if I can hit 128 characters. Sweet. Must be at most 128 characters long. Okay. And now all I have to do is just copy this for the other passwords, basically. So I can do... Uh, copy that and I'll basically have it for 
new password. I wish there was some way where I didn't have to hard code this field here. Um, I mean, I can probably pass in the field name, right? And then I only have to do this because this is such a waste of code here. Let me try that. So uh, let me pass in the field name. Okay. Yeah, Viola Day is cool. I'm really liking it. I like the built-in um, things, these functions, so you can just check here. Oh yeah, this should be called, right? So email, I have to call that. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pass in the field name and then what I'm gonna do here is take this out and then, so do this and then just pass in field name here. And I think that will work. Let me see. Uh, oh no, what am I doing? What am I doing? I still need the dot, the period. Yeah, <laughs> that's invalid syntax. Okay, so here, let me do that and that. Sweet, so um, I might need this as a method because I'm not sure if I can do this in computed but we will see so so our with v validate are you using version 2 or version 3 the newer one where they have um, slots that you pass stuff into because they completely changed that library between versions. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe I just haven't used it enough to like it yet. Because I tried it, the updated version, all of a sudden it was so different. Um, okay, so let's try to pass in... Here, let me pass in the field that I want to call. Let me try this. So, uh, current password... And let me just see if that works real quick. Um, obviously it's not working because the page isn't loading. This field name is undefined. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. So I think I do need this as a method. Oops. Um, Method, method, method. Uh, get rid of this. Let's see if this works. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, comma. Okay. Um, Okay, for some reason it wasn't, it's not working as computed here. Okay. Oh, right, because it would give the same for input. Okay, so the method seems to work fine. Uh, let me see. Where is 120? Okay, yeah, all of the validation works for that now. So now that I have this field name, I'm just going to copy and update the template. So here, I'm gonna do this and put it here and put it here. Oops, no, I just copied instead of pasted. Okay, so put it here. There we go. And now I'll need to update it here. So this will be called new password and this will be uh, confirm password. Okay, and then also I need to change these. And then this and that. Okay, let me try and see if those work. Alright, cool. And now password must be at least eight characters. At least eight characters and at least eight characters. Now um, I need a custom validation to make sure that 
a new password and confirm password are working. Okay, so new password and confirm password should be the same, should equal each other. So let me see what time it is. Oh, it's after, it's after noon. It's lunchtime here. Um, all right, just, just a little bit more. Um, so let me check that new password and confirm password are the same. And I should be able to, um, hmm. I should be able to add some kind of validation here. And return. So I wonder what I could add here. Viewer date. Um, so they have all these built in ones. Check, oh, checks for equality with a given property. This is probably what I want, the same as. So let me check that. Uh, let me add that to confirm password and say same as will be same as and pass in. Uh, let me pass in, can I do this dot new password? I think I can. Um, cool. And now I just need to import same as from uh, Vulidate. So same, same as. Okay. And so I have this same as. Um, so let me do here. Um, so let me check here if, so if, uh, field name, um, I don't, I don't actually know how to mention, at mention in the chat. I guess you guys are taking care of that. So if field name, so if the field name is. I keep forgetting. I've been working in Python so often. Um, so if field name is uh, current password, no, 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 confirm password, then I want to check that it equals the new password. So if the field name is confirm password, then I'm going to do whatever I'm going to put here. So. Um, all right, so then I'm going to check if, um, max length, no, no, if same as, and if it's not, uh, pa uh, passwords must match, I guess. That seems okay. All right, now let me look at my code. Undefined has no properties. All right, so where is undefined? It's not even showing me where it is. If field name. Um, so I wonder if I can't get, if I don't have access to this here. So let's see. Um, I think that might be it. So let me get rid of this and do, oh. Um, why is it giving me this error? Uh, I'm just gonna hard code something there for right now. See if I still get the error. Yeah, so I don't have access to the this object. Um, which is unfortunate. So let's see. So I don't think, um, let me, let me actually look for if they have an example of same as, oh, you pass in the field as a string. That makes sense. Okay. 
So I'll pass in new password because I don't have access to this on the validation object. So let's see what I have now. Let's see if that works. So this password must be at least eight characters long. Okay, passwords must match. Sweet, so that worked. Um, for same as, I just need to pass in the field. Awesome, so that was easy with Fieldate. It was much easier than all those nested fields we had on the last form. Okay, so passwords are being validated. Um, I can quickly do usernames too. Um, so I have these. So email. And then I have the username with min and max length. Um, so let me... do current password errors. Um, let me do email errors. Uh, email, oops, email errors, and then um, uh, username, username errors. So I don't have to pass in anything here. Let me get rid of these. And for email, uh, for right now, I'm just going to be checking the email attribute, I guess. So let's see. Uh, so this will be dot. Do I have a dot email? Yeah. So I have email and then the email data property will be validated based off of email. And if not, I'll say invalid email. Okay, that was easy. Um, oh wait, and here I'll need to do email as well. So dot email, okay. And now for username, I need min and max length. So I'll get rid of required. I'll get rid of this. And then I'll put dot use no dot username. And then uh, this uh, let me put dot username there and uh, dot username. Um, so username must be at least three, three characters long and then username must be at, um, most, what, 20 characters long. Okay. So I think that's all the form validation and stuff. Sweet. So let me, oh, I'm not calling these from the inputs. That's right. Um, Okay, so I have the passwords here. Let me put these validations on the, where is the user one? Where are the inputs? Oh, I fo code folded them. That's why I can't find them. So I have username and email here. So let me put this. Um, oh, right, it's required because it's already there, I think, because I'm already pre-filling it. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna have, this one is username errors, and then I don't need to pass anything. And then this is username and uh, username. Okay, and then I have um, 
Well, this one's email, so I still have. Uh, let me do email errors. I'll call the email errors for that. I've required twice, and then here I'll put uh, validate the email field. Okay, let me see if the, all this stuff works. Why is this not validating? Invalid type check for prop error messages expected string array got function. Um, oh, do I need to call it here? Let's see. Because that returns the array. Yeah, seems like that works now. Username must be at most 20 characters. Oops. <laughs> oh, I have these switched switched around. I have the messages switched. Um, and the, also, this isn't validating the email correctly. So... Alright. So, I have... Let me figure out how I switched those around. Um, so for a username, oh, I'm doing the same thing I was doing before. So putting min length twice, that's what I get for copy pasting. Um, so min length, max, le max length. And now for email, why isn't it validating the email properly? Let me check. Okay, so username must be at least three characters, that works. And now, why isn't the email validating? Where is my validation? So I have email errors. Um, so I'm checking the email field and then that email property that Violidate's giving us. Let me see what e email example. So I, I figured that's like one of the most common examples. Um, yeah. Okay. So, what examples? Basic form, name, age, data nesting, validation groups. Um, let's look at a basic form. So, must be at least four characters. Yeah, I don't know because it just shows this. It doesn't show an example. So, validate, validate email validation. Okay. So I have. Um, Oh, let me put Vue.js, Vue.js. Uh, form validation in the cookbook. Simple form validation with Vue.date on Vue.js developers. I wonder why they wouldn't have an example of email. Let me see. Uh, Okay, so I'm passing in required and email. So they're doing the same thing. Uh, I guess I don't need to call it. So let me correct that. So in email here, I can just do this. Oh, wait. Um, which is the same thing I'm doing for required. Okay. And... They are doing, okay, so they're getting into other types of validation. So if this, this should work now for email validation. Let me see. Invalid email, sweet. All the validation works on this page now. Um, 
except the buttons. I still need to check that the buttons and that it doesn't let you press the button if things are invalid. Um, all right, but that is all the coding I'm going to do um, for this stream. Now let me update here. So update all forms to use Viola-Date. Um, I didn't get to all forms. I need to make a checklist here for this. And update password length requirement. So I did that. And then I'll have, just have to propagate Viola-Date to any other forms that I missed, which should be easier for next time. Um, update password. So for update password, I need to implement email functionality first, and then these things. So I need, I guess I need like five more tickets before I actually deploy this application. So I was hoping to get it deployed this week, and that depends um, on if I have time to work on it outside of the stream. So tomorrow night I have a Python stream. Uh, JT and I are going to finish up working on the, um, what were we working on? Oh yeah, Conway's Game of Life. We're almost done with it. We need to fix some problems we have in the code. So we're going to finish Conway's Game of Life uh, tomorrow night, or it's just Thursday night, 6 p.m. EDT. Um, and then Friday night, 6 p.m. EDT, I'm going to have another JavaScript live stream and work on this application. Um, yeah, finish up some of these tickets Friday night. So I hope you can join me for these streams. Either way, if you want to keep in touch or join the chat, I have a Discord chat. You can find that in the description below. And this has been my longest stream ever. So thank you to anyone who's stuck with me on the stream and for all the help and advice. Um, feel free to raise an issue or make a suggestion for any of the code in the repo. Um, it definitely needs some tender love and care and some updates, features, all kinds of stuff like that. And tell me what you think about it. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And other than that, thanks for joining this stream and I'll see you in the next stream. Have a good night.